equation is uh, the only positive one. So what I've done is I've flipped it. I've actually created the same compute statement with the same numbers, except I'm using positive values. All right, so positive 0 0.02615 instead of negative 2.615. And the only one I switched to negative was that memory variable. Memory in the first instance was 0 .008289. Well, I've switched it to a negative because I've switched all the other ones to positives. So what do I get when I create this super variable that's actually more in line to how I want to interpret the scores? Well, let's check it out. We get exactly the same scores. It's just that now I'm dealing with positive values instead of negative values. So that's really cool. And uh, I suspect a lot of people get stuck on that kind of thing when they do principal components analysis and they want to get factor scores or they get a factor loadings. It's actually arbitrary which ones are negative and positive. As long as you switch all the negatives into positives and switch all the positives into negatives, you're fine. So <coughs> this is the super variable, the canonically variate derived super variable that maximally differentiates between the three levels of education. And we can see that the undergrads score lower, and the PhD, or I, we, once we get into masters, they tend to be a bit higher, and then the PhD students are the highest. They're all the way into the six and sevens and eights and nines even. And that's what we expect. So this is an intelligence score, a combined super intelligence score, that maximally differentiates amongst our independent variable groups and it was derived by our, our raw discriminant function coefficients which you can only get using the syntax in MANOVA. And it's informative because as I'm interpreting it, I'm saying it's the verbal reasoning and spatial reasoning uh, subscales that are really important and I'm interpreting that theoretically to mean that you need more reasoning problem solving skills as you move up the echelons of education. So isn't that so much more interesting than just doing a GLM MANOVA and then not looking at any of the discriminant function coefficients and then just looking at all your dependent variables and finding that they're all statistically significant and not really having much interesting to interpret. Whereas in the old school MANOVA, you get these standardized discriminant functions that you can interpret just like you would a multiple regression and standardized beta weights. And then you get the unstandardized discriminant function coefficients which allow you to calculate the super variable for each person. And from that, you can then calculate means for each of the groups. You can calculate super variable means for each of the groups on the super variable that MANOVA creates for you. But you actually go through the computations of doing the, multiplying the unstandardized coefficients together. So I'm putting, I'm doing a GLM ANOVA based on education and I want, uh, I just want my descriptive statistics and effect size. Okay, and then you're going to see something really cool. Well, cool to statisticians. I don't know if anyone out there is going to find it cool. So here I'm going to do an ANOVA on the super variable, which, if you're thinking, might actually be exactly the same as doing the MANOVA to begin with. That first MANOVA I did in GLM, and the one that I also got in the old school output, this place trace F value of 11.93 and significance, wouldn't that be the same as testing my canonical super variate? Or wouldn't it be pretty close? Uh, the answer is yes, it is actually pretty close. But what I'll point out first is the descriptive statistics. Now that I've created my super variable, my canonically derived super variable from the MANOVA, I've got undergrads have a mean of 4.91 on this, in, in, it's, a, a, it's an intelligence uh, construct with more weighting to the verbal test 2 and 3 and spatial test 1, which is the more reasoning. I'm just saying that's what, that's what they are. And then master's levels have 5.47 and PhD have a mean of 6.47. And here we've got our standard deviations. So we can even calculate Cohen's D on these, um, these differences between the means and standard deviations. Isn't that more informative than, um, than simply doing the, old, uh, the 
conventional way of doing the GLM and not very interesting. Okay, so now we get the ANOVA output. And I 